Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now anybody who knows me knows that I love a Jaguar powered by a V8 engine. So when the opportunity came to drive the new F-Pace SVR with its 5 litre supercharged V8, I couldn't turn it down. I couldn't turn it down because I love Jags with V8 engines, but more importantly, this could well be the last new Jaguar launched with that venerable 5 litre supercharged V8. Because from 2025, Jaguar is going to become an all electric brand. So, this may well be the last hurrah. I say may because Jaguar and Land Rover have got a habit of pulling things out of the hat and surprising us when we're least expecting it. But on the face of it, this is going to be the last Jag with a V8. On the outside, the new 2021 F-Pace SVR looks a touch brawnier than before. There's the new headlights and rear lights and larger grille as shared with the normal F-Pace that's also been facelifted for 2021. But for the SVR, there's a meaner bumper, larger air vents, new wheels and it just seems more shouty than it ever did. Now you'd have to be a proper geek to really notice the changes between the old SVR and the new SVR on the outside because let's face it, the F-Pace SVR has always really managed to look really pretty but also incredibly brutal as well and this one is no exception. Now the biggest change is to be found inside because look at this dashboard. Now it's not often that you get into a, a facelifted, updated car to be greeted by a totally new interior, but that's what Jaguar has done because they've sort of accepted the fact that the old F-Pace's interior wasn't really quite up to scratch. It wasn't befitting of a car that really cost the price that Jaguar put on it. So Jaguar's ripped it out and put this new one in. And I, and trust me, the quality in here is an enormous step up. I mean, everything feels really nicely put together. I cannot see or touch one cheap feeling piece of plastic. And I couldn't say that about the last F-Pace really. Um, there are some nice materials used, lots of lovely leathers dotted around the place. We've got real metal detailing everywhere. Lots of little Jaguar logos. There's some real attention to detail has been lavished on this interior. Um, and if you, and on this SVR, you get this sort of uh, plasticky trim which sort of resembles carbon fibre but in the normal F-Pace, the non-SVR, you can have wood. It's a really really nice place to be. Big tech upgrade as well. All F-Paces get this new Pivi Pro system. It's Jaguar Land Rover's flagship infotainment system. Um, it's an enormous improvement. Uh, you've got this lovely big screen. It's sort of stuck on the dash, but it doesn't look odd at all. Nice curved screen, lovely crisp and clear. A lot easier to use than before. Um, it's not the quicker system in the world. I mean, some of, some of this car's rivals have quicker operating systems, but it's still very nice to use anyway. And yeah, it's just a really comfortable, inviting place to sit. Let's face it, you're not here to watch this review because you want to know about the interior. You want to know what this car is like to drive. Now, Jaguar has been tweaking this car. Um, they haven't just changed the interior, they've been tinkering around under the bonnet and uh, on the chassis as well. Firstly, that engine, that 5 litre supercharged AJ V8. I mean, it's been around in Jaguar products for for decades, hasn't it? For as long as I can remember. And you still get 550 horsepower, um, like you did in the old F-Pace SVR, but now you get an extra 20 newton meters of torque. So now this thing pumps out 700 newton meters, which means it's no slouch. Nought to 60 is just over three seconds. Um, and uh, you get an eight-speed automatic gearbox as well. Um, and if you really want to know, um, fuel economy has been improved. You now get 23 mpg, yes. Oh. And uh, the CO2, it, it emits fewer carbon dioxides uh, now. Um, 
they've also been tweaking around with a few bits and bobs new uh, steering rack a little bit quicker and sharper there's a new um, brake uh, booster on the on the brake pedal it's got a sh uh, shorter brake pedal um, supposed to have better feel as well uh, the dampers have been changed so that there's a better distinction between comfort and dynamic and the electronic rear diff has been tweaked as well to supposedly to offer more grip now that is enough of the technical stuff let's see what this car is like to drive well firstly let me just talk to you about comfort now Jaguar has been retuning those settings and in comfort mode this car does feel a lot more comfortable than it did before um, yeah there's still the odd thump and bump from those 22 inch wheels and and stiff suspension but it just rides the road just a little bit more pliantly than it did before and it's so comfortable in fact you could easily live with this day to day when you're not in the mood to actually give it some beans but I am in the mood so I'm going to change into dynamic mode and let's just pop it down a couple of cogs we've got the loud exhaust on and let's go for it <laughs> now now, whilst Alfa Romeo will give you a V6 in its Stelvio Quattrofolio, and there's a straight six in the BMW X3M, Jaguar has stuck with the V8 for its hot SUV. And you just can't beat a V8, can you? And especially one that sounds as good as this. Now, this five litre supercharged V8 has always sounded fantastic. It's got that lovely balance between, it's got a sort of a staccato kind of high pitched sort of a thud and then a really low bellow to it. Oh, it's just, it sounds a bit like Alan Sugar waking up in the morning with a hangover. This car may well have 20 more newton meters of torque but really i can't really feel that to be perfectly honest with you this car still feels incredibly incredibly quick um, another thing that feels quick is this steering i mean this retune steering has made a lot of difference it just feels a little bit more eager to turn in and it's a bit more bite to the steering as well the brake pedal is a big improvement actually a lot more feel through it and with with less travel on it it just gives you a bit more confidence to be perfectly honest with you um, but the biggest improvement i find to the way this car drives is that rear diff now the old um, SVR had this tendency to when, when you were going quickly on a country road it would just sort of sit up a little bit higher and feel a little bit sort of loose this time round this feels a lot more tied down and it just gives a bit more traction to the rear end it's still very easy to actually get this car a little bit out of shape especially on damp greasy winter roads but um, yeah, yeah at no point do you feel as though this car is wildly out of control it just there's a nice level of bite to it but it like i say it also feels pretty comfortable and uh, tied down which is quite nice and that is the thing about the f-pace svr is it, it feels different to its main rivals the the amg glc 63 and the bmw x3m they're fantastic point to point cars um whereas the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio that always feels frenetic it always feels as though it's got some pent-up energy and it never really feels as though it settles down this car has a lovely balance between being comfortable and refined when you want it to be but when you're in the mood you can give it the beans and it delivers I do have to say though this engine as much as I love it it is starting to feel its age a little bit. I mean, the gearbox feels as though it hampers it a little bit. It's a little bit slow to change at times. And yeah, other rivals with their slightly newer engines do make this car feel just a little bit dated. Now, a negative can be a positive because yes, this car is starting to feel its age. But what it does mean is that this car's got a real old school sort of hot rod character to it. 
And in this day and age of ever electrified cars, the thrill of driving is being sapped away. It's quite nice to be driving something. It just reminds you of the old days, doesn't it? Prices have gone up by about £2,000 over the previous car, but at just under £76,000, the SVR is actually pretty good value for money, especially when you factor in not just the performance on offer, but also the luxurious new interior. It's around £25,000 cheaper than a Porsche Cayenne Turbo, yet feels just as fast and has more personality. The trouble is, however, buyers never flocked to the SVR when it first launched, and I still don't think they will now. This car will remain a rare sight on UK roads, even though it's now quite a lot better than before. What's more sad is we're in the twilight days of Jag's V8, a configuration of engine that's been such a large part of Jaguar's history. Of all these performance SUVs, the SVR would be right at the top of my list, but probably more out of misty-eyed emotion.